Hey guys, it's Pineapple, and you guys asked for a video discussing all of the teachers from UA and their stats. So we're going to be discussing their stats as they appear in My Hero Academia's Ultra Analysis Data Book. As you'd know if you've been following my videos on the book, the data book has over 200 pages of character profiles and stats, on top of all sorts of cool details on all of the characters that you've come to know and love over 240 chapters of the My Hero Academia manga. In the last video, I set a 4,000 like goal for the UA Teachers video, so now I'm going to set a 5,000 like goal for the video covering all of the villains and their stats. That video is going to double as a video about all of the threat rankings of the villains in our story, much like how One Punch Man ranks their monsters and villains. So if you want to see it, smash that like button or just be patient and enjoy my other content that doesn't have any sort of like goals. Either way, it's completely up to you. I want to remind you guys you can follow me on Twitter at Vocal Pineapple for all sorts of news and tweet threads and you can keep up with my channel and uploads by clicking that bell icon, then clicking the drop down menu and clicking notify. That'll give you a notification whenever I upload and I've been uploading a lot of stuff lately so make sure you set that up. With that said, let's get to this video about all of the UA teachers including All Might and how they've improved from the first data book to this one after that intro. Hit it! Alright, so like the last video, the point of this video is to show you guys what the stats are for each of the UA High teachers in the official data book written by Kohei Horikoshi. The book is up to date since it covers up until My Hero Academia Chapter 240, and this video is being released around the time that My Hero Academia Chapter 250 is out. So let's get started. First off, we'll start with an ex-homeroom teacher at UA that still takes the time out to teach our main character some very important lessons, Sodahiko Torino, otherwise known as the hero Gran Torino. Gran Torino has been operating as a hero for a long time in the world if his age is anything to go by, and in many ways, he's sort of like the Yoda of our story. He trains All Might and Deku as they're coming into their powers, and although he's much rougher with All Might, he still kicks Deku around a bit with his amazingly high speed. He has this high speed thanks to his quirk, Jet, that allows him to shoot pressurized air out of his feet. We've seen him when he was younger and he was a pretty tall and strong looking guy, but in his old age, he's gotten extremely small, making me question specifically how much a person can shrink in the My Hero Academia world thanks to age. His old stats in the Ultra Archive book were a D in power, an S in speed, an A in technique, a B in intelligence, and a C in teamwork. His updated stats in the Ultra Analysis book are a D in power, an S in speed, an A in technique, A in intelligence, and an A in being the funny guy. Now, if you want to have an easier time keeping up with all of these stats, make sure you click the closed caption button where I do have all of my subtitles transcribed so you can see exactly what letters go for which stats thanks to the subtitles. Anyway, that A in being funny has to be a joke because his jokes don't really land when he meets Deku, but his intelligence has gotten a decent boost. You could assume that his intelligence went from a B to an A because of age, so comes experience and wisdom, and he has it all, while also being able to remain level-headed in the face of his student and his master's greatest enemy, all for one. Here's hoping Gran Torino stays safe and is able to protect All Might, Deku, and Nana's legacy for even longer. Next up, we'll be talking about another short and small senior citizen still paving the way for our students and heroes, Chiyo Shuzenji, otherwise known as Recovery Girl. Recovery Girl is a massively important character to the structure of UA because she has an extremely rare healing quirk. Her quirk lets her give someone a kiss that triggers their body's natural healing processes and speeds them up drastically. They feel pretty drained afterwards because it takes a lot of stamina to heal like this, but all in all, you can see how her quirk and the dependable use of it would allow UA to have all sorts of dangerous exams since they can expect her to be there to heal everyone when it's all said and done. She's getting up there in age, so they probably do have to start searching for another healer type character to replace her as the school nurse one day, but for now, let's get into her stats. Her stats between the two books haven't changed much, much like many of the teachers on this list because they haven't had much time in the story to actually operate as heroes and show us what they could do. In both books, she has an E in power, E in speed, A in technique, and an A in intelligence. In the old Ultra Archive book, she had a teamwork stat of B, but in the Ultra Analysis book instead, that's replaced with a rehabilitation stat of an S. That S in rehabilitation is strange to me because it's not like her quirk can cause people to regrow body parts like arms or even an ear, let's say. So could healing quirks really be that rare that there doesn't exist one that's all that much more powerful than hers? 
Here is hoping Aerie learns to control her quirk soon, because she very well might be the only person that's better at healing than Recovery Girl when everything is said and done. We believe in you, Aerie Hime. Very quickly, let's go over a few heroes that don't have updated stats, at least that I could find, but I'll be including them in this video for the sake of having all of the staff stats in one place. Snipe has been here ever since the first arc, and he was pretty cool during the USJ incident in Season 1. This is because his quirk homing lets him pretty much control the battlefield as long as he has bullets. With his two special guns and his quirk, he can shoot and aim his bullets to pretty much anywhere by controlling the trajectory until it hits its target. He faces off against Shoji and Toru during the final exams, and he'd be absolutely devastating as a villain if he were to ever join Season 4's Shihai Sakai and had the advantage of their quirk-deleting bullets. His stats are a C in power, C in speed, S in technique, B in intelligence, and a C in teamwork. Alongside him, we have fan favorite character and Deku's father, Lunch Rush. Him being Deku's dad is just a meme, but Lunch Rush is UA's resident chef. He handles the cooking in the UA cafeteria, and he looks like a chef from head to toe. Lunch Rush has some long cable of some sort running from his face around his body, making him seem like more of a cooking robot than a person, however that's neither here nor there I guess. Lunch Rush's stats are an E in power, D in speed, B in technique, C in intelligence, and B in teamwork. I'd assume if his stats were updated, he'd have an S in cooking, because everyone at UA seems to really love his food, thanks to the wide variety of things that he's able to offer. Next up, we've got the Black Hole Hero, 13. Now, we've learned thanks to the Ultra Analysis book that 13 is indeed a female after their gender was in question in the fandom. I've always been a big fan of 13's design since she's literally an astronaut with yellow air forces on, but the coolest thing about 13 is her quirk. Her quirk, Black Hole, is pretty much Miroku's wind tunnel from Inuyasha. She can create a vortex that has a huge amount of pulling force as it sucks things in, reducing them to atoms. She literally has a constant black hole vortex, and it can be extremely helpful against those villains that there's no talking to or stopping by normal means, but usually she's using her quirk to be one of the best rescue heroes that there is. She tried to absorb Kurogiri during the USJ incident in Season 1, but that didn't go well. But we got to see her for a bit again during the final exams arc, where she almost accidentally turns Ochako to dust before getting a helping of that gunhead martial arts. Her stats in both books mirror each other with a B in power, a D in speed, B in technique, and a B in intelligence. She has an A in teamwork in the first guidebook, and in the second one that stat is instead an A in pulling force. Here's hoping 13 doesn't almost accidentally suck herself into a black hole again, and hopefully this queen of suction finds a spot in the story for the upcoming war arc, since her quirk could be extremely useful for the things to come. Number 6 in this video is a hero that we definitely all know and love, Class 1A's homeroom teacher and the quirk eraser hero, Shota Aizawa, also known as Eraserhead. Aizawa's led a really interesting life, much of which we've learned about thanks to the official My Hero Academia side manga, My Hero Academia Vigilantes. Before he was ever a homeroom teacher at UA, he himself was a UA student still trying to figure out how to best use his quirk to be helpful. He planned on opening an agency side by side of his three best friends, Present Mike, Midnight, and Shirakumo Oboro. We get a very quick flashback to Shirakumo around the joint training arc with Present Mike commenting on how Shinso has to remind Aizawa of himself when he was younger. My friend and my sort of sidekick at this point, Dan Exclaims, has a good video on Aizawa's full backstory and also the tragic story behind My Hero Academia's Goku, Shirakumo Oboro. So make sure you go check out both of those videos and make sure you tell him I sent you. Aizawa is an absolute beast, with him destroying a bunch of villains that appeared during the USJ incident, and he's done a good job handling himself throughout the story because he's actually one of the more broken heroes in the series. In a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's hard to think of mostly anyone being able to defeat him because his quirk erasure lets him turn off someone's quirk just by looking at them. This doesn't work for certain types of quirks, like quirks that literally mutate the person, and it does make his eyes really dry, but you can see how this quirk would make him pretty busted in a world where most people depend on their quirks to fight. It's not just his quirk though, he also has his binding cloth scarf that's made of a special material. He's so efficient with using this binding cloth that he can use it to get around by swinging with it, while also using it to set all sorts of traps, and even just straight up tightening it around an enemy to cut off all of their movement, even if they're a mutant type quirk user, so it's a really, really strong scarf. His stats in the Ultra Archive book were a C in power, B in speed, S in technique, B in intelligence, and a C in teamwork. In the new data book, he has a C in power, B plus in speed, S plus in technique, 
A plus in intelligence, and an S in dry eyes. Aizo is actually one of the few characters in the book that has an S plus in any stat, and that stat being technique shows you just how amazing Aizo is as one of the most technical heroes in the entire series. He's able to take his extremely technical quirk and fighting style to the highest degree, becoming as proficient as he can with it. His eyes have been injured thanks to the USJ incident, so he can't keep them open for quite as long as before, but here's hoping Aizo stays around for a long time to guide our students, and especially Shinso and Eri, into the future. Number 7 on our list is one of Aizawa's closest friends, Hisashi Yamada, otherwise known as the loudmouth hero, Present Mike. Present Mike is one of those characters we haven't seen a ton of in the series, but sadly we've had to hear him quite a bit. If people had a problem with Asta being loud and annoying and yelling in the beginning of Black Clover's anime, that's how I feel about Present Mike. I know he's a great hero and has an amazing quirk, but he's also really annoying to me because he's always screaming. I get that's the point because that screaming high-pitched voice of his that sounds like a mouse getting stuff into a mayonnaise jar is actually his most powerful attribute, but ugh. Thanks to his quirk voice, he can raise the volume of his voice extremely high, and he uses that to completely disable enemies by screaming and sending giant sound shockwaves that can even rupture or destroy their eardrums. In the first book, his stats were a C in power, D in speed, B in technique, A in intelligence, and an A in teamwork. In the Ultra Analysis book, his stats are a C in power, a C in speed, which is up from the D previously, a B in technique, a B in intelligence, which is actually down from the A he previously had, and an S plus in DJ soul. He definitely has the soul of a DJ, but his intelligence has gone down, making me wonder if his brain is getting fried by his constant screaming. Let's hope he never steps on a Lego or subs his toe, because if he does, I'll be moving underground to make sure I don't have to hear it. The next hero is responsible for saving Deku and Todoroki from the giant explosion they caused with their techniques in the sports festival, so of course I'm talking about Ken Ishiyama, also known as the cement hero, Cement Toss. Now, Cement Toss has done a few things in the story, and like I just mentioned, he's absolutely necessary for some events like the sports festival, where he can keep the students safe with barriers, but also completely reform and rebuild the stage in a short amount of time. He is one of the proctors of the sports festival, so we'll likely see him again once the second year sports festival comes around. But we also saw him in an actual combat situation against Kirishima and Sato during the final exams. He absolutely bodies the both of them, showing that having power isn't just enough to take this guy on. He can pretty much infinitely create barriers and things out of cement, so you need more than brute strength. Brute strength isn't his strong suit though, as his old stats show he has a C in power and a D in speed, an A in technique, an A in intelligence, and a B in teamwork. In the new data book, he's actually seen a decent upgrade in the stats, unlike a lot of the teachers. He has a B plus in power, an A in speed, a in technique, A in intelligence, and finally an E in roundness. Which I suspect is because he's a block. Maybe working for UA and using his quirk in all sorts of ways for the students has caused him to sharpen up, but the new stats actually make him seem like he'd be a pretty impressive and dangerous hero, so, so here's hoping we see more of Cementos and his Pokemon sounding name soon. Alongside him is another teacher at UA that actually serves a few purposes besides just being an instructor. And that's Ectoplasm, the clone hero. Ectoplasm is a big, wide grin fellow who wears a big trench coat, sort of like Jugo in Naruto. That's not the only similarity between him and that series, because he's also able to create a ton of clones of himself via the material that he pours out of his mouth. Now, you may think his quirk actually sounds a bit like Twice's quirk, because the clones are formed and molded out of a white material that the user can create, but Twice actually has a much, much, much more efficient version of this quirk, because there's no limit to how many clones that he can make, while Ectoplasm is limited to around 30 clones at once. Like Twice, his clones can get taken out and turned to mush with a few strong attacks, but this guy's scary look and the big size that he has makes it so that seeing a wave of these guys coming towards you is probably way more threatening than even seeing a wave of Twice clones. He serves as a watchdog for UA by having his clones patrol the area around the school, but he also serves as a sort of training dummy for the school as well. He can have a bunch of his clones spawn to fulfill all sorts of training exercises with the students, using clones that they can kill without having to hold back since he can just make more. He actually lost his legs during his hero career, so it's amazing that he's still able to keep up despite that. His stats in the original data book were a B in power, B in speed, A in technique, C in intelligence, and a D in teamwork. His new stats in the Ultra Analysis book are a B in power, C in speed, A in technique, 
C in intelligence, and surprisingly, an A in karaoke. Who would have guessed? He's got to be fun at parties when you aren't worried about his appearance, because he's actually a pretty horrifying sight without his mask and hero outfit. But in a world full of strange looking quirk users, I'm sure no one minds him too much. Another teacher at UA that's probably fun at parties is probably the most attractive character in the entire manga to me, Nemuri Kayama, also known as the R-rated hero, Midnight. Midnight is out here looking delicious, but I wouldn't get too close to her because her skin secretes a sweet smelling toxin that puts people to sleep when they inhale it. Thanks to her quirk Somnambulist, which is the official term for a sleepwalker if you didn't know. She originally wears a much more X-rated costume which she barely covers anything with via the use of belts and straps, but in her older age and probably because she's teaching at a school full of children, she's toned it down quite a bit by wearing a skin tight suit and a corset that is still a bit over the top, but it is what it is. She's had quite a bit of shine in our story, whether it's as another member of the Keep Deku and Shoto from blowing up the arena committee, or as the one that nearly took down Mineta for good during the final exams arc. Originally, she was one of Aizawa's best friends as he and the other characters I've mentioned planned on opening a hero agency together, but she ended up working for a pro hero and resident prince lookalike his Purple Highness. That's actually his name as far as we know, and he definitely live up to Prince's flamboyant and over-the-top nature. Back to Midnight, her stats in the original book were a D in power, C in speed, A in technique, C in intelligence, and a C in teamwork. In the new book, her stats remain the same, but she now has an S in sexiness, which goes without saying. I'd say the only competition she has out of the pro heroes are Mirko and Mount Lady, but that's neither here nor there. We also recently saw her in the manga trying to give her students some much needed media training, so let's see how that pays off. Next up, we've got another pair of teachers and staff members that we don't know too much about, but we'll cover them together and back to back. First off, we've got Higari Maijima, otherwise known as the Excavation Hero, Power Loader. You may remember seeing Power Loader in Hatsume Mei's lab as she works on various projects because he seems to be in charge of the research and development department at UA and the support course. This makes sense because Power Loader's whole thing is having all the knowledge that anyone could ever need when it comes to creating and upgrading all of the costumes and outfits for our heroes to wear at UA. Tinkering with small things is probably difficult to do with his metal tip fingers that he has thanks to his quirk, Iron Claws, but he seems to work fine despite them. His stats in the first data book were an A in power, C in speed, D in technique, B in intelligence, and a C in teamwork. His new stats are pretty weird because it seems like he's actually seen a significant decrease in his capabilities. He now has an A in power and a B minus in speed, but he also has a D in technique, a D in intelligence, and a D in height. He looks young, but he's actually in his 40s, so there's no growth spurt coming for him, but let's hope that he can just build himself some sort of powerful mech or costume that can make him at least seem taller if he wants. We've also got Ryo Inui, the true guard dog of UA, also known as the Hound Hero, Hound Dog. Now we haven't seen Hound Dog very much in the story since he's more of a presence after the current events of the anime, but we do see him very briefly during the USJ arc, where he's one of the teachers that arrives to save the day. And he also has a really funny moment barking at the students after the end of the Bakugo and Deku fight at the end of Season 3. He guards UA alongside Ectoplasm using his amazing nose and animal-like instincts, but he's apparently also a guidance counselor for the students. His stats in the Ultra Analysis book are an A plus in power, A in speed, D minus in technique, B in intelligence, and an A in K9 loyalty. He's definitely insanely loyal to the school and protecting the students, and his internships are how we know that one of Horikoshi's characters from his previous manga has actually made it into my hero as a pro hero or student. So, salute to him. Almost done with our list, we have the big muscular blood hero, the teacher of class 1B himself, Sekijiro Khan, otherwise known as Vlad King. Vlad King is a big stocky man that doesn't have a build too different from Endeavor and All Might even. Having a great cardiovascular system really comes in handy with a quirk like blood control that lets him use his own blood as a weapon and in various other ways since he seems to have free control over it. He can even harden the blood to make it a big solid mass that can hold people in place like he does in his quick fight against Dobby in Season 3 during the forest training exams. He really saves Kirishima and a few others from actually getting killed by Dobby and his quirk could probably be used 
used to turn the blood that he uses into actual weapons that he could then use to fight or even a shield. When he's done using the blood, he can reabsorb it back into his body, but it's unclear if he can control the blood at all before it leaves his body and if he can control other people's blood. If so, he'd actually be a ridiculously OP bloodbending hero, but what are his stats like? In the original data book, he had a B in power, B in speed, B in technique, C in intelligence, and a C in teamwork. But thanks to the new data book, his stats have gone up a bit. He now has a B in power, a B plus in speed, an A plus in technique, a C in intelligence, and an A in love for his students. That last one is really endearing because honestly, it feels good to know that 1B's teacher sees them as the main class and not just the fun cast of side characters. And I'm hoping eventually we do get to see him have a good full on fight at some point because I'm really interested in seeing the full capabilities of his powers and I'm sure it's gonna be a bloody battle as long as he's involved. Second to last on our list, of course, is the principal of UA, who we definitely can't forget when talking about UA heroes and staff, and that's Principal Nezu. Principal Nezu is a mouse that was experimented on by humans, and somehow he eventually became one of the only animals of a quirk that we know of. I have a personal theory that Nezu is an escaped rat from one of Ujiko's experiments, or maybe a doctor before Ujiko's time, but I guess that's just hearsay for now. It's true though that mice in the My Hero Academia world play a very special role because Chisaki believes that mice are the originators of the disease that went on to become quirks. He can't be the only one that thinks this because it's actually a known theory in the world and even Destro, the leader of the Liberation Army of the past, has a mouse patch on his shoulder that seems to be part of the logo of the Liberation Army. Nezu jokes around a lot for a character with such a dark backstory and I do want to see how he got that scar, but his explanation would probably be short and accurate thanks to how amazingly smart he is. His quirk high spec gives him a massive level of intelligence that far outclasses any human characters that we've seen in the series so far. He's able to do massive amounts of planning and calculations in his head, so much so that he knows how to make buildings fall in a certain way to block off parts of the city, all while he's wildly swinging around a wrecking ball and doing all the calculations at the same time in an instant. He's also obviously a mouse that can speak thanks to developing language, and he's one of the few animals in the whole world, I'm sure, that has sentience and personality like a human would. As the principal of UA, his job is to oversee the development of the students, and he has been caught off guard a few times by the League of Villains and the traitor in UA. But his planning surely has to come in handy some point in a meaningful way, but that remains to be seen. His stats originally were a D in power, D in speed, a in technique, S in intelligence, and a C in teamwork. He's even weaker than before now with an E in power and a D in speed, but he maintains his A in technique and S in intelligence while also now having an A in loveliness. Whether that just means he's really soft and comfortable to pet and brush, or this is because he likes to climb on characters and hide in the eyes of a scarf is unknown, but you really don't care. You just want me to move on to the next hero because he's the one you clicked on the video for. The final hero and staff member of UA on this list is the number one hero and X symbol of peace, Toshi Noriyaki, otherwise known as All Might. All Might is the previous holder of One For All, and he doesn't really need a long bio, because if you watch this series, much like every villain in Japan and maybe even the world, you know who he is. He's the only hero we've seen to have a town square dedicated to him, and even his own large statue celebrating his greatness and his triumph over evil, and that makes sense, because All Might is the greatest hero there ever was. Using One For All, which he got at a young age from his master, he was able to usher the world into a new age of peace, and while he couldn't completely put a stop to crime and villainy, he always did his best, even when he's told that if he continues down this path of saving people, he is going to die a gruesome death. His stats initially in the Ultra Archive data book were an S in every single field. S in power, speed, technique, intelligence, teamwork, he was the best at them all. But his updated stats are even better. Some may ask, how are his stats better since he's retired? But I actually believe these stats are from his final battle against All For One in Season 3, and stop there. In the Ultra Analysis book, his stats are marked as an S plus in power, S plus in speed, S in technique, S in intelligence, and an S plus in charisma. He has absolutely the craziest stats out of anyone in the entire book minus one person, and that's for good reason. We know from All Might that if he were to just walk around without really controlling his output with One For All, 
he'd create tornadoes just by walking, and he punched someone so hard that he completely changed the weather, and that wasn't even using his United States of Smash. All Might's stats from before he passed the quirk on him before he got injured had to be a double S in every field, and that's terrifying because it means that this man was an absolute monster, but it's also exciting because it gives us a taste at what's to come for Deku in the future. All Might is the reason that Deku is finally a hero, and if he doesn't die in the next four months of the series, it'll be interesting to see how he continues to support Deku as he develops into the greatest hero of all time. Let's hope that All Might is around to see it, but if not, I'm sure his Force Ghosts inside of One For All can still congratulate Deku one day in his dreams, and I guess that's still worth something. That has been all of the teachers and staff at UA High that we know of and have stats for. So, thanks for watching, and again, if you want to see all of the League of Villains stats, including the character, and I think you know which one, that has better stats than All Might, you can hit this video with 5,000 likes. Again, I'll be including all of their threat rankings, just like One Punch Man's threat rankings, from the official data book in that video as well, so you also have that to look forward to. With that said, this has been Pineapple. I love you guys. I'll see you guys again soon with another new video. Peace.